Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. In a world where everyone says hello, they dare to say, Yeah, yeah get out. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yes. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Yeah. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good day. Hey. Yeah. Good day. Yeah, g'day Tim. Yeah, g'day Leon. Yeah, g'day everyone. Yeah, hello everybody. How are you? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I Good, was, thank you. Yeah, no, that's that's enough of that. Yeah. Tim, no. I'm uh, quite nervous about this episode. Okay, why? Because I don't have my water bottle with me. Yeah, what a drop. Because as Tim and I... What a fumble. <laughs> as Tim and I came down here, I had my brand new Samsung Galaxy Tab S3 in my hand. Mm. I had our... Expensive H6 Zoom recorder in my hand and my water bottle and the keys. And I open the door and I drop the water bottle on its lid and there's it's a litre water bottle. Mm. And I would say we lost about 700 mils. Oh yeah, there's a moat around our house now. Yeah, yeah. Tim and I are swimming. I saw a crocodile uh, in the moat, so that should be fun getting back into the house. We had yeah. to get flood pants just to get down here. Yeah. So I'm worried that I'm going to be dry as a kite. Mm, dry uh, as a kite. Speak. Yeah, you know. A kite would be up where it's quite windy, so I imagine it would dry out the fibres of the material. Oh, you don't want a wet I'm kite. with you on that one. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> it's a new analogy. Coined it. Um, but you know what I do want to talk about? Mm, what's that? I want to talk about um, satiating your hunger needs through unconventional means. Like eating another man? Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, okay, good. What do you got? Maybe a Bush Ranger, since it's a Bush Ranger episode. It's episode 30. We have yeah. to do a Bush Ranger. It's in the rules. Alexander Pierce is Alexander the man's Pierce. name that we'll be talking about. Now, Alexander Pierce was one of Hydra's leaders, and it's top... Oh, no, sorry. That's the Marvel. The Marvel Oh, character. I see. Uh, oh, Andrew. It was a joke. Andrew, you yeah. see what I did there? That we all... Because we all remember Andrew Pierce from Marvel. I should have kept going. I probably should have read more for the joke to Who be more effective. Who the fuck Andrew Pierce from Marvel? Um, well, like I said, <laughs> he's <laughs> he was Hydra. One, one of Hydra's leaders. <laughs> I imagine... I'm pretty sure he was in some kind of Captain America movie at some point. He probably had humans, though. He was in The Winter Soldier. Yeah, okay. Oh, he might have eaten humans. We don't know what Hydra got up to. Yeah, he definitely would have eaten humans. Yeah. But I want to talk about Bush Ranger yeah, no, the real, Alexander Pierce. The real important Pierce, spelt P E A R C E. No relation to Andrew. I don't Bogus know why Pierce. I emphasized the C. The C, the C was <laughs> present. There's a in, C in this one. The C, the C was present in both versions of the names, yet that is the letter I chose. How do you spell Pierce? P E S R E. Yeah, Pierce. Um, Alexander Pierce yes. was an Irish convict who was right. transported to Van Diemen's Land, known today as Tim- Van uh, t- Tasmania. Land. Oh, sorry, Tasmania. Right. So we're going to Tasmania uh, two weeks in a row. Yeah, I've never been there, so we're not actually going there. But metaphorically, spiritually, yeah. and bush rangerly, narratively, we're going there. And by yeah. two weeks in a row, you mean there's been four weeks in between? But yeah, yeah. So he was uh, he was down there seven years. For theft, he escaped uh, a couple times, which we'll talk about. Um, what is steal? Well, we'll get there, won't oh, we? Oh, right. Um, this is an overview. And allegedly, mm. by his own alleging, although we can't be sure, mm. became a cannibal down Sel- in the wild bush. Self-allegation of being a cannibal is an interesting power play. Yeah, he admitted it on four occasions to four <laughs> different people. But there, are, there's a little bit of like, is this guy telling the truth or is he just trying to cover for people who went missing and were still bush rangers? But we'll get there. Alexander Pierce is a cannibal. And why do you know that? He told me. Yeah. In an interview, he said, he I'm it. a cannibal, I'm a cannibal. Boy, howdy, I'm a cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> I like to um, eat man flesh. I don't think there was a word for that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what he said and they mistook him as a cannibal because, you know, they were, um, you know, less open-minded. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. He could have just been a man flesh eater. He could have been homosexual and they've just misunderstood what he said. Oh, I see where you went with you that. Said, yeah, you get where I I'm wasn't going. going there. You weren't going there. No. But that's where I went. But I get it. Yeah. And now our listeners get it. Yeah. Happy Mardi Gras, everyone, by the way. That was <laughs> yeah. last night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So Pierce was born in County Monaghan. 
I definitely said that wrong, Monaghan, maybe, in Ireland. Mm. Um, he was a Roman Catholic farm labourer. Sentenced in Armour, definitely said that wrong again, yep. in 1819, to penal transportation. Hey, oh. Here we go. To Van Diemen's Land for theft of six pairs of shoes. At least he stole pairs. Back in those days, fuck, shoes were hard to come by, weren't they? So Although, six pairs is a fair few. You, do you know that if you stole six shoes, you'd still have six pairs even if they were odd shoes? Because you could pair them up. That would be three pairs. Ah, uh, it would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be. And today we learnt some <laughs> maths. <laughs> two plus two uh, is four. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of shoes. It's a lot of shoes, especially for back then. Like that's, I said, in the in conversion rates of shoes from back then to now, you're looking at a good eighteen shoes, I reckon. Was he? Is he the? Uh, is he the? Um, the inspiration for that children's book where all the kids go to that beach place, they take off their shoes, and that witch lady steals the shoes and puts them in the bag. I couldn't tell you. I've never heard um, that story in my life. Yep. So. No, it's definitely a story. It could be a witch lady. It could be a monster. Anyway, yeah, Fair shoe stealer McGee. Um, he committed various offences while in Tasmania and 18th of May, 1822. Um, it was advertised in the Hobart Town Gazette that he was an absconder. Shoes. With a ten pound reward for his capture. Now he went to Tasmania because of the shoes, and then once he was there, he did other shit. Because like when the when the convicts first got here, most of them weren't actually like locked up. A lot right. of them worked on farms and stuff when they Just first got here, roaming for the, the land. free settlers. Yeah. So while he was here, he started doing some bad shit. Doesn't say specifically what, um, but absconding. I imagine he probably just ran away. From where he was meant to be. Oh, is Absconding running away? I think so. I feel like... Because back in the day, all of Tasmania mm. was a penal colony, essentially. Yeah. But at the same time, if you just dedicate Tasmania to be a penal colony, unless he swam across to the mainland, there's nowhere to go. Yeah, where would he... How would he get out of there? Like, you could literally just have prisoners on Tasmania... But you would not have to like watch them or anything because it's just like, yeah, he's probably in the bush somewhere, yeah. but he's still in yeah. Tasmania. Yeah. As long as we man the ports if and make sure no boats come in. If he's even alive, yeah. then, then he's probably in the bush. Who cares? Like he can't go anywhere. Yeah. Which I guess is um, really something that you could, could be said about any country at the time before like regular flight and boats is that if you're on that country, you are basically a prisoner. Mm-hmm. These are true. Um, look, for that absconding and forging an order, don't mm. know what that means. Oh, well. Which was, these were serious crimes. Yes. He received a second sentence <gasps> of transportation, um, which basically meant he went to the secondary penal establishment at Sarah Island oh, nice. in Macquarie Harbour, nice. yeah. um, which I understand to be an island. Yes. Um, just after... in, the Mac- in the Macquarie Harbour there. Yeah, much like um, the works of Andrew Lloyd Webber, it was named after Sarah. Um, yeah. Sarah, what's her last name? Blah, blah, Sarah. 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 Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> How would you like to listen the to The Phantom of the Opera Sarah? Girl. Yeah, yeah. Sarah. Whatever, whatever her name was. We all know her. Um, that island's named after her. Probably not. Um, all right. On September 20th, 1822, Amy... Uh, Jesus, he didn't even make like four months there. Um, him, Pierce, along with seven other convicts on the Macquarie Harbour Penal Station. Um, I'll read their names. Alexander Dalton, Thomas Bodenham, William Kennelly, Kennelly, not Kennedy. Kennelly. This is an important time to uh, say K-E-N-N-E-R-L-Y. Kennelly. Um, Matthew Travers, Edward Brown, Robert Greenhill, and John Mather. Um, they escaped while working on the eastern side of the harbour. Greenhill, who had an axe, decided he was going to be the leader. He was supported by his mate, Travis. Um, they were sent for... St- uh, one of them... Which one had been sent? Oh, I think Greenhill was sent there for stealing a businessman's schooner. Well, AKA, that's a He puni- stole a guy's beer. That's punishable by death Yeah, in Australia. Big deal. Big deal. Um, Wait, maybe you mean schooner like the boat. Oh, Actually, it does say in, <laughs> in an attempt to, to escape. <laughs> I took his beer and I ran away. <laughs> I did wonder why. I was like, why did he steal his beer if he was trying to escape? Quick, we can get inside the schooner it's glass Dutch and courage. float away. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Dutch courage. He's like, I cannot do this sober. I'm not, I'm not a good enough man. That's got to be the first time that you and I both had a blonde moment at the same time. Yeah, probably. Steal a skiing. Um, so about 15 days into the journey, 
The men were starving and they drew lots to see who would be killed for food. This I don't get. They're in the bush in Tasmania. I imagine there would be quite a few um, animals, of yep. which the Tasmania devil would be one. At and this time, Tasmania they were eating those motherfuckers like crazy. Tiger as well would have been there. Yeah. Um, but they chose to kill one of them. Um, Thomas Bottenham drew the short straw. Grinhill dispatched to him with an exhaustion. I don't know what that means. Um, it left Greenhill, Travers, John Mather, and Alexander Pierce. Um, three of the guys were like, uh, fuck this. And they were out of there. That's they fair. weren't going to stick around for this. That's um, so yeah, all that was left was Greenhill, Travis, John Mather, and Alexander Pierce. Greenhill and Travis acting as a team. And it would be um, Mather or Pierce's turn next. Next time they were going to kill someone. Okay, eaten. right. So that's the end of the Pierce story. He was uh, eaten next. No, sir. He <gasps> decided, um, fuck this other guy. He was going to go with Greenhill and Travis. Sided uh-huh. with them. So Mather was the next victim. Um, it was then that Pierce had a little bit of luck. Travers was bitten on the foot by a snake. They could have killed the snakes and eaten them. Just saying. Again, yeah. The indigenous people of Australia have been eating snakes for thousands of years. I don't know why we they could couldn't do, do it. Yeah. Um, he was bitten on the foot. Grinnell insisted they carry him for five days, but eventually um, it was very clear he wasn't going to recover, and they killed him. After that, the two of them had a bit of a cat and mouse situation. Grinnell had the axe, but they were both starving. Um, eventually, Pierce grabbed the axe, killed Grenell, ate his body, later raid, raided indigenous campsite and stole more of their food. Um, he killed sheep when he could, um, reached the settled districts. Again, lucky. Um, the shepherd who came out and found him eating one of the lambs was weirdly an old friend of Pierce's. Oh, hey, Craig. <laughs> oh, mate. Pierce's... Is, is that... Is that you? Wait, Wait, is that... I haven't seen you since high school. Is that Craigie Longlegs? Yeah. Is that <laughs> yeah. Craigie... Lo- oh, Craigie Longlegs. I didn't even... Know. Yeah. Are these your sheep? Oh, mate. The things you come across when you live in a small country. Crazy, crazy stuff. Anyway, he was a mate. Pierce then got inducted into like a sheep stealing ring that his mate was part of. Um, right. Eventually picked up by William Davis and Ralph Churton. Um, they were both eventually hanged for bush ranging and escaping from military escort. So, they didn't do too well out of it. No. Pierce survived for a little longer, though. Good. Um, he'd been on the run for 113 days, a little less of which... About half of the time he was in the wilderness. Mm. Um, after uh, they, they caught him, yep. obviously. Obviously. Um, he was locked up in Hobart. This is when Pierce made the confession to Reverend Robert Knopwood, the magistrate and chaplain. Yes. Um, about the cannibalism story. However, Notwood didn't believe the cannibalism story and was convinced that the others were still living as bush rangers out there um, and that Pierce had made all of this up. And he just sent him back to Macquarie Harbour. Okay. Yeah. Um, that being said, there are some inconsistencies in Pierce's story, apparently. They don't spell out what they are, but he made three confessions. There's the one that he says to Notwood, one to Lieutenant Cuthbertson, um, and who was a... Commandant at uh, Macquarie Harbour when he was in hospital um, after his second escape, which we'll talk about in a second, and a confession to Father Philip Connolly, um, the Catholic priest at the colony, the night before he was executed. Spoiler alert <gasps> on that one. Um, and the details differed in some of them, but basically, what you can't deny is eight men went into the bush, <laughs> three came out, um, well, four came out, I guess, because three yeah. of them left. Pierce was one of them. Four came out. What happened to the other boys? Only one survived out of the ones that stayed in the bush. Look, I... I just don't know if he ate these boys. Well, we don't know. But here's the thing. Within a year, he escaped a second time. Okay. This time, he was joined by a young convict by the name of Thomas Cox. He was captured within 10 days and taken to the Supreme Court of Van Diemen's Land in Hobart, where he was tried and convicted of murdering and cannibalizing Thomas Cox. Okay, so they they took him seriously enough that they decided, wait, that's an extra person. Well, that's another per- Well, this is his second escape. Well, you know what they say, once you get a taste of human flesh, once you yeah. once you pop, you can't stop, I think is that slogan. That's, that's true, but you can't flesh, get your it? hand yeah, into too the, far into, into the, the esophagus. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to pull um, out their inner Pringles. Yeah, so that's something. Um, they 
there's all this weird stuff though like the people the observers said that he didn't look like a cannibal this is the kind of bullshit they went on with back then you know if you look like a cannibal you smell like a cannibal um, you sound like a cannibal it's a duck yeah it, it, Pierce said that he killed Cox because they reached um, the King's River and discovered that Cox couldn't swim okay. which is not a reason to kill somebody in my standards but I guess maybe he was worried that he had to leave Cox behind yeah. and the Cox would get caught because he was young and inexperienced and then give away his position or something. I'd be killed I don't know. He got caught anyway, so I don't think it really matters. No. But he did kill him and it is seems very likely that he ate him. Um, he ended up being hanged at Hobart Town Jail on the 19th of July in 1824 mm-hmm. after receiving his last rites from Father Connolly, who I nice. mentioned before. You did. To whom he confessed, I imagine, all of the eating, including yep. the cock story. Yeah, you want to you want to get it all out there. Yeah, yeah. You want to go to your maker with all cannibalism since, yep. you know, told. The baker, candlestick maker. Um, it's reported that just before he was hanged, his last words were, man's flesh is delicious, it tastes better, uh, it tastes far better than fish or pork. What about, but it doesn't taste better than chicken. Specifically fish or pork. Like chicken is the pinnacle of meat. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you're not going to make a call like it tastes better than chicken. See, I also read that that his last words were human flesh, yummy, yummy, Mm. um, which was the inspiration for fruit salad. Yeah, they had to change the words to make it more suitable for children. But it's, yeah, it's the same sentiment. I just really doubt those were his last words. Although maybe, like, what if it was a lie, if all of this is fake... If he spent his whole life making other people believe it, he probably believed it himself in the end. It's the L. Ron Hubbard situation. Yeah. You tell people yeah. a fake story enough, you might end up being part of the fake story. I think, like we talk about with all of these Bush Rangers, all of these stories get built up around them and it's impossible to know really yep. whether any of them are actually true or not. Yeah. Or whether they are half true or what the situation is. This one seems like maybe it's something he could have said to protect the others. He could have said just to make himself sound hard. He could have actually done it. He was in the bush for 113 days with not much to eat. He could have done it. He could have been a psycho. You say not much to eat. We've already talked about the wildlife, but then we talk about the part where he goes to a sheep farm to eat sheep, and it's like, hey, um, hey, Alex, (laughs) probably could have done that like four boys ago. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) I can Pretty just imagine much. the meeting where it's like, well, there's eight of us um, and uh, we're going to have to start eating each other. It's like, there's a sheep farm just there. Yep, no, as I said. No, that's the pet sheep. <laughs> that's Jonathan. We can't kill Jonathan. Once you give it a name, you can't kill it. Yes, yeah, exactly. He's yeah. like, Jonathan, Craig, Craig, Jonathan. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, crap, we can't eat the sheep. <laughs> yeah. And then the best part about like the whole, the way the group worked is... The man with the axe is in charge. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you've got the axe, you are in charge, which is how everything is going to always revolve for me uh, from now on. Sorry, Barry. Are you owning the axe? Uh, then I'll be making the calls then, my friend. Uh, yeah. We're going to eat people. <laughs> any politicians in the future, I suggest you hold an axe in all of your speeches because if you don't, I'm not going to vote for you. Yeah, That's just how it's going to work. We yeah. want to show you're in charge. Yeah. Um, is that all there is about Alexander? Pretty much. I mean... He's kind of a big deal, uh, even in popular culture. A lot of songs, movies made Are about him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you meant we were talking about it before. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, I was going to say it was um, Andrew Pierce. <clears throat> a bit too close in the name department for my liking. Did Alexander Pierce ever really die? Is he really Andrew Pierce? Did he change his name? Probably not. Does it be spelt differently? But yeah. we won't know. Um, it was actually the Magic Lantern with our good friend Cole, mm. uh, who did an episode on Van Diemen's Land that I listened to a long time ago. Yeah, um, and it was it was an amazing episode. If you go find that episode, yeah, I personally can't watch Van Diemen's Land because I, from that episode, I found out they do a lot of audio with loud eating and eating wow. sounds to make people uncomfortable. And considering that's my uh, big old pet mm. hate. Mm. Um, I can't sit through that movie, but if you can watch Van Diemen's Land and then yeah. listen to Cole talk about it, it's but yeah, based on about, this old boy, yeah, that's about old mate eating people. What else? Because I've see the thing is, aside from Van Diemen's Land, I've never um, I've never heard of this boy before. Um, so there's a biographical film called The Last Confession of Alexander Pierce, um, which was shot in 2008 in Tasmania and Sydney. 
Um, it is what it is. It's basically just the story of him eating people. Eating people. Yep. Um, there's one called Dying Breed, a horror film about Pierce. I don't 100% know what it's oh. about, but I think it's actually more about his descendants. I've seen that movie. Yeah. It's because a, a friend of mine is in it. Right. So, let me tell you about this film, Dying Breed. Please do. Um, I, I saw it because a good friend of mine, um, Brendan, who I will have to link to this now, um, he, uh, I knew him from, he was the youth leader at church when I was a church boy. A youth, yep. Um, and he was an actor and there was this movie, Dying Breed, and so I went to see it and it was about Tasmania and it was about, like, it kind of did the, yeah, his descendants, but it was also like a bit incesty in a way, I think right, it was kind yeah. of underlying. But there were also these weird flashes that they did to, I think, like, from my memory, like bits about like Tasmanian tigers still running around as well. Oh, okay. So it was just like putting all these myths and theories in there together. But it had a, a, a bit of a, a, a Sweeney Todd element of people being baked into pies right? as right. well. Um, it's actually not a bad movie. Um, Maybe we need to watch it. But Brendan, this friend of mine who is a lovely, lovely man, mm. um, he he plays the creepy guy. Ah, the creepy guy in the creepy movies. Yeah, so, so he like thing. kind of just lurks around and stares at people. And it's like, I know you and you're a very nice person. Because he also is in, just to talk about uh, my friend Brendan for a second, whose last name escapes me and I'll apologize to him. After this, isn't his last name Rendon? I thought it was B. B. Rendon. Rendon. Yeah, B. Sorry, Rendon. B. Rendon. Yeah. Um, he was also in um, Black Rock, which is the movie version of Property of the Clan, mm. which is a movie about a girl um, being sexually assaulted. Um, but he <laughs> very light stuff. Very light. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. He plays one of the like bad guys in that, and I've never seen that movie. But I think my sister told me it's just like it's horrible to watch because it's like it's our really pleasant friend Brendan yeah. just being the worst human being. There you go. Um, but anyway, yeah. So Dying Breed, I have I've seen that. Interesting. And, uh, we should possibly watch it. Oh yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Got a fun little insight into something I literally <laughs> just read off the internet. Yeah, it's pretty hard um, having famous friends. You know, it's uh, you know, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's also books. There's a uh, fictionalized version of his adventures um, written by Marcus Clark uh, in the novel For the Term of His Natural Life. Yes. Um, there's some songs. The Drones, an Australian band, recorded a song called Words from the Executioner to Alexander Pierce. Yes. Um, which I think was weirdly on an episode of um, Rock Quiz we were watching like three weeks ago. Maybe. It could I have think. been. They usually pay, play odd songs. Yeah, weirdly enough. Um, Donahue is the name of my friend. Brandon uh, Donahue. <laughs> there we Sorry. go. Yes, Rock Whiz, so. songs. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, subject of the Australian band, weddings, parties, anything, song, a tale they won't believe. Um, so that's... Oh, and now Robert Hughes. Who's Robert Hughes? I'm not. We I'm, interviewed Robert Drew. Ah, yes, Robert Drew. <laughs> D R E W <laughs> E. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, not the author of. He wrote a book called The Fatal Shore, um, which I think is a narrative account of Pierce's story. So there you go. That's something. That, it's definitely our thing that we just talked about for 20 minutes. So yeah. take that. Uh, so there's there's a lot of uh, representations of his story out there. Please go and enjoy uh, some of them. Tim, if you were stranded in the bush somewhere in far north Queensland, mm. would you eat your friend? Nah, he'd be sweaty as fuck. It's so hot up there. Yeah, that's true. It's Although, so gross. You'd probably, have to wash it. tenderize the meat. There a lot of sweat mm. and the sinew. And... Yeah, not for me. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm always curious about cuisines. I've yeah, heard okay. that, I've heard that eating friends is, no. You realize but, this is a public, <laughs> yeah. this is released I haven't, eat, publicly, I haven't eaten right? anyone. Yeah. I'm the opposite to, uh, to Alexander Pierce. I'm <laughs> like, no, no, I haven't eaten anyone. Even yeah. though I ha- um, no, I'd like, I would obviously, wouldn't have, but I think, I always think it's very interesting because people describe it as the most tasty meat. Interesting. 
It's the forbidden fruit, isn't it? And by people, I mean I wrote it in my personal journal. <laughs> <laughs> this is tastier Me, than right pork, now, it's fish, so delicious. lamb, beef. Not not tastier than chicken. No, nah, nothing's tastier than chicken. Um, you can I, do so much with chicken. Oh, chicken. You can only do so much with flesh. You can yeah. only deep fry it or shallow fry it um, mm. of the human flesh. Indeed. Um, Tim, I also found the name of Sarah from Andrew um, ah, yes. life. Her last name is Brightman. Sarah Bright. I did it for Sarah. Man? Bright man? Bright man. B R I H B R I G H T M A N. Oh, not men. No, Just bright the one man. man. Not bright. Yeah, right. Um, Tim, I love talking about bush rangers with you. I love talking with you. I love you. What is it? Mm, uh, this no. is uncomfortable. Your beard's looking um, decent at the moment, I would it's say. It's coming up. It's decent. Um, mine got a trim down, but still. Still remains luscious, and I do that by using Bush Rangers Brew, made yeah. by our friend Joel Magpie. Last name inserted here. Um, We're not doing well with last names today. No, I don't remember anything. I'm too old. I've been at uni all weekend. Um, I'm very badly with last names today. So we use Bush Rangers Brew, which is an amazing beard care product made in Australia, all natural. It smells delicious. I, um, in the beginning, used to use a bit of uh, Rum Rebellion and a bit of Bunyip's Dreaming, and boy, howdy, does it bring back memories of Bunyip's Dreaming. Mm. Um, but I've matured in my taste and moved on to the world of Mystics, which smells like lollies. I have not matured in my taste. I still use both Bunyip's Dreaming and Rum Rebellion. But you've only just started. Yeah. Like you only you started using uh, you started using <laughs> yeah. beard product. Uh, I, just, I just wanted the one taste. Yeah, the one taste. That's once it. you pop a Bush Rangers brew, you can't stop. It's yeah. like eating people. It's really hard to get your hand into the <laughs> jar, though. <laughs> oh. um, but yeah, so uh, you only started using like whatever that is, like twenty five episodes ago or something like that. Yeah, that's true. Um, so you're you you're in your infancy. You'll mature to Mystics, but I Sea Bright. What? That's Joel's last name. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Welcome to the episode where Tim and I interrupt each other to remember. Tim, Green, that's his last name. Yeah. Um, to interrupt. Yeah, so. G-R-E-E-N. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next week, we'll be spell- spelling out names for half an hour. Um, yeah, so it's good stuff. I love yeah. it. I've been using it for, it's like six years now, seven years. I don't know. I'm a, I've been doing it for ages. And you should get some too because if you go onto the website, which is www.bushrangersbrew.com, and you use the coupon code YEARGADAY, all caps, no um, no punctuation, mm. you will get 25% off your order. That's 25%. 25% is um, 25% of 100. It is. That's almost half. Yeah. It's half of a half. It's about 25%. Yeah, it's, it's 25% yeah. of a full, mm. which is, but it's but it's 50% of a half of yeah. 100. Yeah. So it's a pretty good deal. No, it's an amazing deal. Um, I know that uh, Adam Dotter, Dam Otter, has used it. Um, and he calls me regularly and he just doesn't stop talking about it. I have to tell him to go away because I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so go to the website, www.bushrangersbrew.com. Go and find them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. We'll share it all around. And use the discount code YEARGADAY at checkout for your first Blue Apron meal for free. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Apron sponsor us. We want free food. Blue Apron, a better way to put it on your beard. Yeah. Um, Tim. Rub the trout in. Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't Rub know. Maybe the, the trout in. Into your beard. Matheson. The yeah. trout's last name. Ah, trout Matheson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trout Matheson sounds like a character from Home and Away. Yeah. He's a river boy, old Trout Matheson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Tim, every week we have a legitimate listener. Yeah. Write a question in either for dad advice or some information about how somebody who actually exists out there in the real world does it every week. Yeah. You and I have never done it. No. We're not we're not phonies. No. Um but this week is extra real. Uh our friend Ali shit my pants chance <laughs> yeah. has written in and you'll understand why I've said her name properly as well this time. All right. Um she's written in for a dad advice and I'm beside myself with excitement. Okay. I'm so excited I dropped my water bottle and boy howdy am I parched right now. Yep. Can't wait to go for a swim later. <laughs> get back <laughs> into the house. Get back into the door. Bottle. Water bottle. That's his like anyway. So <laughs> yeah. um from joke. Allison. Mm. Hey guys. I haven't found Milo yet, but the search goes on. Ah, she was gonna look, wasn't she? She yeah. is. 
I've got what might be a rather American problem slash question, but I'll take whatever advice I can get. Okay. What better way to solve American problems than with Australian advice? I'm a high school teacher and class advisor. Mm. This year, my class are juniors, which means we have prom coming up next month. Mm. Sidebar, do Australian high schools have something like prom? Yes. Uh, We call it formal. Yeah, and we have like discos every now and then as well, but it's not really prom prom. Yeah, we do. So at my school, we had a a year 10 formal, which was organized by the school and we all got suited up and went to a venue. Year 10 being like the the second, the third last year of high school. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it used to be the time when people could leave school, but now there's more requirements around when you can leave yeah, school. Just to but give yeah. a little bit of uh, um, understanding to our American The ca- year 11 class. formal at my school was we organized by us. So it was organized by us and the school took no part in it. Right. And so we just wanted to go have a party. Yeah. And then the year 12 formal, exactly the same as year 10 formal, including the same venue and everything like that, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, the year 12 formal is the big one. You get suited up. Yeah. At our school, because we were a boy-girl school, in year 10, you weren't allowed to bring outside people in. You had to like bring someone i think it had to be from the year group as well like what well, if you, even if you had a boyfriend in a different yeah year. that's the thing about the australian ones is they're very specific to the year that you're in yeah. like you can bring people from other years maybe as a date but yeah. like that doesn't really happen a great deal anyway no year and 12 it does outside of school i don't think there was really anyone i mean i went to a slightly different type of high school but yeah, yeah. i know it was much more normal down here in well, down where you were in Sydney. Yeah, year 12, it was much more like if you had, like, because, you know, there's, a, there's in, in my school, there was only 120 people in our year 12. I say yeah. only, that's a lot Dating of Dating someone from another school was not exactly. much more normal yeah, for you guys. And, and then even people from different year groups and stuff like that, which can be kind of weird when you've got like a year 11 or a year 10 at your formal and you're like, oh, this is weird. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, we do have a thing, Ali. It's called a formal. And now you've learned something. And that's the end of your dad advice. No, <laughs> so uh, there's We more will not answer any more questions. Yeah, no more questions. Um, the prom theme this year is old Hollywood. Okay. You know, you've got old Hollywood, New York, new Hollywood, new New York. Van Diemen's Land. New Van Diemen's Land. L-A-N-D. Yeah. Sarah Brightman. <laughs> um, uh, my question is, oh, we're finally getting to it. Come on, Ali, concise. Um, my question is, how dressy should I dress to chaperone the prom? Mm. Okay, that's the first, there's a couple of questions, so let's do it one at a time. So how fancy should you dress? Um... I believe, this is more teacher advice rather than dad advice, but I believe that if you want the kids to get involved and enjoy themselves, then you should also get involved and enjoy yourself. Mm. So if the theme is old Hollywood Mm. and you want to go as Audrey Hepburn, then boy howdy, you go all out. You get the pearls, the black dress, the gloves from Breakfast at Tiffany's and you go for it. Mm. Because if you can show that you're into it, I think the kids will respond well to that. That's just my personal experience. Interesting. What? What? If you were a student, Tim, would you would you think it's weird if a teacher rocked up fully, get it out? Look, all of the teachers have to commit. I think this is True. a discussion she needs to take to her fellow teachers. Ooh, collegiate. Yeah, we need to have that discussion with your colleagues mm. um, because if you don't want to be that one teacher, True. You know what I'm saying? Who rocks up full decked out? Because you will be talked about. Oh, yeah. 100%. You don't want to be the one teacher yeah. that commits to old Hollywood and so does like a grayscale makeup where it looks like you're in a black and white yeah. film and, and everyone else just rocks up in t-shirts. And, and there'll white. be like two kind of groups of students that'll talk to you over the period of the night if you're mm. the only one. Mm. There'll be the ones who genuinely like you as a person who'll be mm. like, oh my God, that's so cool. I wish we yep. got dressed up. And then you, there'll be the ones who will be um, mocking you, but you don't realize that they're mocking you. Yes. Yeah. I think as much as you can take it to your colleagues, you could also take it to the students. Like, yeah. I, I think if, if you ask the students, I think they're more likely to say yes anyway. Yeah. But then they'll also be like, they might get excited. Like, if you talk two weeks out it's and you're true, like, should I get true. dressed up? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, you should get dressed up. Yeah. Like, what did you say it was? What? What did you just say then? Did you say truth? I truce? said it's true. Oh, it's true. T R U E. I thought you said Struce. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, yes. Yeah. The last name of our friend, Michael Struce. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think ask the students. Um, but it also does depend on your relationship with the student. Oh, it depends on a lot of things. Because I'm a cool guy. Basically, look, I think uh, it's all about communication, isn't it? Oh, it's, everything's about communication. Just have a chat. Yeah, have a Get chat. Get down on their level, uh, stand on your knees. I don't know how tall kids are anymore. Um, and just kind of say, hey, 
Should I get dressed up or what? Yeah. Answer me this. Yell it in their face. Say That's riddle, a great way to connect with a child. Riddle me this, bat kid. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> second part of the question. Should I dance or just stand around with other chaperones? I don't know. I, again... Because, as I've said, I'm a cool guy, therefore I'm the, probably the coolest teacher that's ever taught in the existence of history. Yeah. So I get away with a lot, you know? And I was also the drama teacher, that which meant I could literally be as crazy as I wanted. But if you are if you don't have that relationship with the students, it's going to be a bit weird. Could be. Look, I think uh, if done in the appropriate fashion, it could be a bit of fun. It could be a bit of fun. I live my life by the rule of leave them wanting more. So don't do it all night. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just dance a couple songs here and there. It gives them a little pop of fun in their night. If you can get um, the DJ to play one of your favorite 80s, 90s or early 2000s jams... And you can dance to that, and the kids will be like, "Oh my god, this is oh, so yeah. vintage!" And look yeah. at me, that's so. Like, that'd if you be can fun. Learn an entire MC Hammer song and yeah. just be able to recite it off the top of your head. Those motherfuckers will be so impressed. Yeah, yeah. but if you get up there and you're like, "I love this new Taylor Swift song," they'll be like, um, "Back off, this is yeah. our song." Like, if you drop a line in "Lose Yourself" by Eminem, yeah. you've just lost yourself. That's oh, it. You're yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the whole point of this. This is the music, the moment. You yeah. own it. You better never let it go. I would you recommend. Understand? If you're going to play a song, play our <laughs> version of Lose Yourself crossed with 5, 6, five, seven, six eight by Steps because then yeah. you can get you can show the kids the dance to 5, 6, 7, 8. Actually, Ali, I want that song played at this prom or Ali, formal or whatever it is. Ali, get, Ali, get really close. Ali, yeah. Ali, listen to me. Get one of our songs played, preferably you Lose Yourself 5, 6, 7, 8 yeah. at this prom. If you don't, if you don't, Ali... Nothing's going to happen. Realistically, nothing's going to happen. You're cut from the family. Yeah. On the day of my daughter's wedding. Um, yeah, I... <laughs> but again, I think that if if there's kids not dancing, if you go up there... And again, not if you don't, don't go up there and be like, I'm seriously dancing right now. This might, If you go up there and goober it out, mm. some kids are going to respond to that and want to come goober it out too. Yeah. 100%. And if they don't, you tried. Yeah. So just, you know... At the end of the day, they're juniors. What do they even know? At the end of the day, you're not Who cares what they think? Yeah. Um, and then to finish it off... Uh, Ali says, I haven't been to an American prom since I was at high school, since I was a high school junior. Mm. That's probably fine, Ali. That would be like, I, I guess there's the senior prom, but it could be a bit weird if you were just going to proms all these years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hey, true. Kids, junior prom on this weekend? I go there. every year and it gets more and more awkward every year. Honestly, it does. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't been since I was a high school junior and I don't remember teachers being there at all, but I teach at a much smaller school than I went to. That plays into yeah. it as well. My teachers were there, very much. So. Oh yeah, my teachers were definitely there. Um, thanks, friends. Allison shit my pants. Chance. The reason I'm saying it like that because in brackets after that she says a equals a h. Ah, p a h n t s. Pants. Thank you, Ali, for not being the first person to ever send in a legitimate thing. Yeah, no. Although I think remembering back one time. Ali was one of the few people. I think Ali. I think she sent in uh, Harold, didn't she? I think Ali, Aaron, and maybe Tommy have sent in stuff before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's um, that's a thing. So thank you for doing that. It means a lot. And yeah, this totally non-important um, moment is very important. This is the moment. Um, yeah. But take pictures um, of you being there. Yeah, as I said, just have fun because like you've got to give up your night, I yeah. assume, to go to this thing. So don't 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 go like. It's outside of school time. It's a different thing. You've still got to, you know, be an authority figure, but you like have, you know, you're gonna you're gonna come out of this with a much better relationship with those students. You do you, you do you as they do they. Um, Tim, speaking of our friends and podcasts, aside from going and listening to um, the Magic Lantern with our good friend Cole and his uh, lady Erica or his wife, I shouldn't say lady. Ah, oh, scrap it. No, so um, Cole and Erica and listening to Van Diemen's Land. You should mm. also go and check out our good friend James Anderson from Unabashedly Obsessed. He started a new podcast, which I think launched this week or launches next week, called Blink and You'll Miss It, which is only a, like a five-minute episode every day for the five days of the week about Blink-182, um, Boxcar Racer, and Plus 44. And I was on it. Some 44? No, plus 44. They're all Blink-182 oh, offshoots. Um, cool. So, yeah, it's called Blink and You'll Miss It. I know bands. 
and I'm on... I've recorded five or six episodes with them already. Like They're spread out across like the next year or so, but it's fun. Yeah, awesome. So put that in your podcast pipe and listen to it. Yeah, put the pipe in your ear. In your ear hole. Light it up. Thanks to Bushrangers Brew for supporting us. Go to www.bushrangersbrew.com and use the code YEARGADAY for 25% off your order. Mm. Uh, thanks to Taylor Smell Tea Smell Smelly Tea for uh, our wonderful cover art. Oh, and to Fern Tree Music. Get all your music needs on his Facebook page. Uh, I also noticed that uh, he launched a Twitch stream recently. Mm. Don't know the exact name, but I know it's the Fern Tree thing again. Yes. So look into that. Uh, he's a funny guy. I imagine he will be very entertaining. So if you like watching Twitch, which I know some people do, yes, get in there. Yes, give him a give him a geese. Yes, that means watch in Australian. Also, our friend Kieran Nunn, who you would have heard on our Comic Con episode uh, or Super what you Comic Con Comic Con episode. Yeah, I think he was uh, on two episodes actually. But yeah, yeah, who did um, who does the uh, the comic the Talking Bread? Hey, mm. hey, hey! You see what he did there? It's a rhyme. Yeah. Um, he has launched a Kickstarter lately for his for issue number five of the Talking Bread. Now I supported his last Kickstarter, and I've got a copy of the comic, and I've got a plush toy of a bread, and a sticker, and a poster, and a hoo ha, and a whoopsie doo. I got everything for my Kickstarter money. Fabulous. Um, and this ne- the latest Kickstarter is for uh, Terror of the Killer Mold. Yeah. That's the next issue. Mold is a bread thing. Yeah, you, so, well, yeah, you get mold on bread. Yeah, he's, so he's doing that. The Talking Bread, Terror of the Killer Mold. Find it on Kickstarter by talk, typing in, I guess, the Talking Bread or typing in Kieran Nunn, K-I-E-R-A-N-N-U-N-N. A bunch of great rewards on there, supporting a good cause, a friend of the show, and uh, for just $3, you can get a digital copy. And a fun, good idea. Yeah, great idea mm. about bread that talks. In a Brilliant zombie way. If you like the Walking Dead, um, don't tell them about the copyright problems. Yeah. Keep it under your hat until it's big enough for him to be able to retain solicitors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But good stuff, Kieran. All right. So I think that's everything. Find us on Facebook, <coughs> Twitter, Instagram at Yeah Podcast. Email us at www.yeargaday.com by using the contact thing. Or Yeah Podcast at gmail.com is what I meant to say. Mm, gmail.com. Um, yes. Yeah. Thanking you to <laughs> Ali Ship My Pants Chance mm. um, for submitting a dad vice and listen to her show. Um, so that's how it ends. Yep. Her and Adam. Um, and that's it. Lots of plugs today because we have a lot of friends. and So many plugs. If you have a lot of holes in your life, you want to plug them with friends. Yeah. And sometimes if you don't have a lot of hair, you want to plug, plug hair plugs. With friends. That's the plug. I'm just getting in some um, plug jokes. Plug thing. Yeah. All right. Tim and I are going to wade through the water and get back in the front door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as always. Yeah. G'day, Tim. Yeah. G'day, Leon. Yeah. G'day, everyone. Yeah. G'day, everyone. Catch you on the flippity flop. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.